Welcome back, Storm fans. It's Brent Cook, and today is the opening day of baseball, and thanks to Tyler Carden, I'm stuck here playing Ad Nauseam Tendrils. I kid, I kid. Tyler, I appreciate your continued support. Tyler is a member of this channel who regularly does donation decks and is a terrific contributor. Tyler, I do appreciate you. Tyler's favorite legacy deck is Ad Nauseam Tendrils. Tyler has asked me to do a real Fixing Ant video, not my April Fool's video that you can check out in the card above, but a real, hey, let's fix Ant, what would you do? So I've thought a lot about this. I actually waited four or five days to record this video because I really wanted to process my thoughts and really get everything down. So when you look at this deck list, you might think this is nothing revolutionary. That's fine, but I've put some consideration here. So not everything I said in that April Fool's video was a joke. Like the best jokes have some truth behind them, right? Uh, and I think if I'm being completely honest, the first half, maybe th first third of that video have a lot of hard hitting truths. So the first one is that Preordain is not a legacy playable card. I'm sorry, I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings. If you're emotionally attached to preordain, hey, you do you. Whatever makes you happy, live your best life. But the card sucks. And the reason why is it was a playable card pre-London Mulligan. Because pre-London Mulligan decks needed to fix their consistency issues, card quality mattered a lot more. Since then, the London Mulligan has fixed consistency issues and the card power level of the format has raised due to the fire design. And with that, Legacy has gained a lot of heavy-hitting playable cards, and Preordain is just kind of stinky. So, when you think of it, like, you're wasting an entire turn to sculpt one card. Uh, sometimes, too, I mean, it's just not that good. And Legacy's become a lot faster. Uh, the critical turn, I think, is faster than it's been in some time. That's another reason not to play Preordain. So this list has no copies of Preordain. That's step number one. And step number two, and I can't believe it's taken this long to happen, but Ant players for, for the last three years since Wishclaw has been printed should be playing for Wishclaw for Infernal Tutor. Um, I mean, we did it with the Epic Storm shortly after. It took us a month or two to figure it out, but we were like, hey, we should be playing for Wishclaw for Burning Wish. Ant has never gotten to that level. They're like, maybe we'll play one, maybe we'll play two. They should be playing four. Preordain is just not good, but there's not a lot of innovation happening within the Ant community. I guess that's what I'm doing here today. So we we're playing four Wish Claw Talisman. Those were not jokes for my video. I do think that these are the actual way that you should fix this deck. So Preordain's out. Duress, another card that just hasn't aged well. And the reason it hasn't aged well is, well, force and negation for one. When you dress your opponent, they can just let it resolve and show you force force and a couple blue cards. And that doesn't do anything because you're not forcing them to take action. So with cards like Veil of Summer, they have to force it or else they just flat out lose the game. And that's what we want. We want cards that require them to take action. We don't want them to sit back and have more decisions to be made because when you are when you allow your opponents to have decisions to be made, they can leverage their play skill to beat you. So Dress and Thoughtseize are really good at beating bad players, but really poor at beating good players. And when I'm playing in a large event, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to beat the good players because I want to be at the top. I want to be in first place. So if you're just facing players who aren't very good, Dress and Thoughtseize and those sort of things are fine, but Veil of Summer is really where you want to be. We are still playing Thoughtseize today because, well, it does go with the core of Ant. We need to be able to hit Endurance, which Dress doesn't do, but if I had my way, uh, we wouldn't be playing Thoughtseize at all. It is correct, don't get me wrong, but I would prefer not to have to play this card. So the next thing is Veil of Summer. In the joke video, I, I played four. Four could be correct, but today we're playing a single copy of Luster Storm. Well, why is that? That's pretty strange, right? Like I could just be playing four Veil of Summer. Well, we added four Wishclaw into our deck, which changes the dynamic of how this deck plays because now we can win on the stack, so, so to speak. I don't mean Castle Lethal Tundras of Agony. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we can put Infernal Tutor on the stack, sacrifice some Lions Eye Diamonds. Our opponent might go to force the Infernal Tutor. There we can activate Wishclaw Talisman, get Veil of Summer. Okay, do you see the problem? Wait a minute. Think about it. Do you see the problem? No? All right. Well, the problem is that Veil of Summer draws a card. Well, why is that a bad thing? Infernal Tutor requires the keyword Hellbent. 
piecing it together yet? No? Okay. Well, when you draw a card off Veil of Summer, you cannot search your library for any card. So you'd have to get a copy of whatever card you draw. If it's a Lion's Eye Diamond or a land, you can't use it. The only way that works is if it, you draw a Dark Ritual, a Reign of Filth, or a Cabal Ritual. So that's a little bit odd, right? Like you don't really want that. So instead we're playing a single Flusterstorm in the main to win on the stack with. Perhaps you don't need to win on the stack and Veil of Summer is fine that way, but the one of Flusterstorm actually adds a lot of utility to the deck and that's why I would play at least one in the main. So the next step in my video was a joke about adding in Chrome Mox and Mox Opal. I don't think that's what you want to be doing. I think the strength of Ant is the fact that it's a slower graveyard. Well, I don't think that's actually a strength, but you don't want to go against what your deck does. I guess that's what I'm trying to say here. You want to play to your deck's strengths. And the strength of Ant is Past in Flames, right? Like it's really a Past in Flames deck. It's never really been an Ad Nauseam deck. So trying to improve Ad Nauseam when it's not an Ad Nauseam deck isn't what you want to be doing. So cards like Chrome Mox and Mox Opal don't work. So instead you want to play to Past in Flames being a powerful card. I do think Past in Flames, if I'm being completely honest, I'm not trying to hurt anyone's feelings, is a card that hasn't aged poorly in a world with Endurance and Force of Negation. That said, that's what this deck does well. It's a Past in Flames deck. So even though it hasn't aged well, you need to make it a good Past in Flames deck. And in order for that to happen, Reign of Filth is actually better than a Chrome Mox or Mox Opal because it enables Cabal Ritual to be active, and by active I mean Threshold, quicker. That's what we're going for. We're not trying to play Chrome Mox or Mox Opal because we need permanents. Well, we need things in the graveyard. We don't need permanents. Permanents don't work well with Cabal Ritual. Reign of Filth actually does that quite well. So I would be running a Reign of Filth over the other acceleration to make the cards we already have better. So that's actually a better game plan, in my opinion, than trying to go the other way. Don't be bad the Epic Storm. Be good Ant. That is the goal here. So uh, that's what I would do there. And, we, and if we look at the rest of the deck, it looks pretty stock until we get to, oh, Ave Progenitor Ooze. Most people run empty the Warrens. You're not going to believe me when I say this, but I meant what I said in the April Fool's video. Empty is a card that has not aged well. I'll say it again. Empty is a card that has not aged well. Well, why is that? In that video, I explained Delver Secret says flying. Dragon's Rage Channeler gains flying very quickly. Murktide Regent, flying. Well, what do a bunch of 1-1 Ground Pounders do? They get... F <laughs> your, your opponent's creatures fly over them and you die, especially when they're all 3-3s three and 80 flying dragons. So, uh, Empty isn't a card that races very well, and on top of that, Ant is a deck that struggles to make Storm. Ant players don't get upset. It's sort of a harsh truth. Empty is a card where... You really want it to be for 7 or for 8. Ant is a deck that struggles to consistently do that quickly. Harsh truth. I'm sorry, I've said it. You just gotta look in the mirror every once in a while and accept these things. Well, I've had an empty for 9 on turn 1 once. Cool. I'm, I'm happy for you, but on average, you have to look at what your deck does. Ant is not a deck that creates 7 or 8 storm on turn 1 or, or even turn 2. Uh, for an empty that well because if you could do seven or eight storm or more you could probably just tendrils for lethal so you want a card that's better with a lower storm count and that is ave progenitor ooze and ave while it doesn't fly like empty the warrens i completely get that it does win the game faster than empty on average with a lower storm count because for five storm you're putting 20 power on the board so you don't need as much storm and it's more likely to win so I've thought a lot about this, and I think Ant, and I'm not joking here, should be the Ave deck. The Epic Storm isn't playing Ave. Ant should move into the Ave space. And I think it's actually a position of power, and I'm not joking. Like, I know it's tough to believe me when I say that I'm, like, trying to fix Ant. I really do believe everything, everything I'm saying in this video. So, yes, we're adding a 5-drop into our Ad Nauseam deck. I completely get that. Whoops. Get over here. You weren't allowed to move. Uh... And I get that it seems like I'm being disingenuous. I'm really not. I'm trying to help here. So the reason that Ave is so good is that off Infernal Tutor, it's pretty easy to cast it with Lion's Eye Diamond. We only have two green sources in our deck between Bayou and Tropical Island, which is actually something I wanted to change. When I was looking at the deck list before I started recording, I was trying to find a way to fit in a third, or I'm sorry, a second Tropical Island, which might seem a little bit weird. Why would I want two Trop and not two Bayou? Well, 
The Epic Storm, Alex McKinley and I have really analyzed the mana base. And what you want is you want lands that are either protection or combo mana. Bayou is both. Bayou stinks. I'm going to say it one more time. Bayou stinks because it's both. You can't cast Veil of Summer and Dark Ritual off this in the same turn. You might be thinking, well, yeah, well, I can do either or, but that's not what you want. So ideally, you would be pairing Basic Swamp with Tropical Island in a lot of games. That's actually your best configuration here. And you'd want two traps in case this one gets wastelanded. I almost cut, and you're not going to believe me, I almost cut Underground Sea for a second Tropical Island, and that would give you three green sources for Abe, so in theory you could hardcast her the, the natural way. Um, but really, I think you also want just more green sources so you can consistently find them for Veil of Summer. And that is not a joke. I, I really do think this deck probably wants a third, but I'm not sure how to add it. You could shave a fetch land, but at that point you have seven fetches and eight fetchables, which is just bad deck building. You don't want that. So for today, I'm going to try this mana base. Uh, but I think you might want to consider in the future, maybe one underground sea and two drops because you have black sources in other places. You have a basic swamp. You have this stinky bayou. Uh, I don't think you want two drop zero bayou. Uh, I feel like that might create some issues, but I could be wrong. So I think Abe is definitely the space this deck wants to be in. It dodges endurance quite well, and it's powerful. Like, it just represents lethal damage. A lot of decks in the format struggle to remove ooze tokens. Terminus isn't a plague card anymore, so I would definitely be looking at Ave. And one of the strengths of Ave, in my opinion, in this deck is Wishclaw Talisman. Another circle back with the Ad Nauseum, I'm sorry, with Wishclaw Talisman, very early on, after the printing of Modern Horizons 2, we realized how good Ape was in conjunction with Wishclaw. And it's really for the same reason that Tendrils is good with Wishclaw and the Epic Storm. So you resolve Wishclaw early, and then on your combo turn, you fight with Thoughtseize, you fight with Veil of Summer, you fight with Fluster Storm. You create this naturally high storm count, and then you just sacrifice your Lion's Eye Diamond to make triple green, and then search your deck for Ave. And your opponent won't have any answers. They can't fluster it. They can't counterspell it. And then they don't play cards like Terminus. So they're flat and dead. That is why Wishclaw is so good. Is that it naturally just says, hey, you can't counter when I activate it. You're dead. And a lot of people don't force Wishclaw early like they should. So you get rewarded from playing more storm spells in your deck. And you might be thinking, Bryant, you're all about Galvanic Relay right now. Why aren't you playing Relay? It's true. I love Galvanic Relay. The card's busted. Red Necro for life. Uh, but Ant is not the right deck for it. So with Galvanic Relay, you are rewarded for playing permanence. Well, we have four Lion's Eye Diamond and four Lotus Petal. End of list. Uh, that's a little bit awkward because you want to gain card advantage off Relay. If I'm over here casting Dark Rituals to, or Cabal Ritual to go one card deeper with Relay, I'm actually not doing myself any sort of favor because now the top cards that I have to reveal need to win the game without... They have to be the perfect mixture of cards, right? It has to be mana, it has to be protection, it has to be tutors. And that's a little bit strange, especially when we're not gaining permanent card advantage, we're just rummaging. Um, so you put yourself in more situations where Relay has to be perfect. And let's circle back to where I said the deck struggles to make Storm for Empty. Relay is the same way. So you might get six or seven cards, but what if you reveal three lands in your 15 land deck? This is not the right shell for Galvanic Relay. That's my point here. So I wouldn't actually play Relay in Ant if I'm being completely serious. Um, yeah, and I know that's hard to believe, but I, I think it's for the best. And that covers the main deck. I'm sorry, I know that I'm going really long on this deck tech, but Tyler wanted me to fix Ant, and well, I'm going to do it. So in the sideboard, I like Chain of Vapor, and then I like Abrupt Decay as my answers. I bring those over from the Epic Storm, because they really do cover everything. And then if you look at additional slots, we'll see one Massacre and one Dress Down. Well, why are we only playing those two? So there's six answers total. When you look at a lot of ant sideboards, they play eight or nine answers to various things. They're like, well, I want this for this match and this for this matchup, but versatile cards tend to do a lot of the same thing while being less narrow. Um, and then we have these two narrow cards between Dress Down and Massacre. 
Well, one of the strengths of Wishclaw Talisman is it rewards you for playing powerful singletons, which goes a little bit against Infernal Tutor because Infernal Tutor wants you to play multiples for searching them up. But with Wishclaw, you can just find Massacre against Death and Taxes and then wipe their board and win the game. Uh, Ant is a naturally slower deck, so it struggles to beat Death and Taxes early. So because of that, I like an answer like Massacre that's going to be a haymaker in the mid to late game. Dress down is very similar, except it has applications against decks like Doomsday. Uh, so that's why I like those. So we've covered our six answer spells. And then we're getting over here to Carpet of Flowers. Ant is a deck that makes a lot of mana between Cabal Ritual and Dark Ritual, all this stuff. Ant players all the time, and I mean all the time, tell me we don't need Carpet, we have plenty of mana. Sure. You're perfect, your deck's perfect, nothing's ever needed to change. Well, if we open up our minds a little bit, Carpet of Flowers is just bananas against the best deck in the format. And I'm talking about Is It or Blue Red Delver. And if we're trying to be the Ave deck, Carpet allows us to just easily cast Ave from hand. So if we board up on Ooze, we can naturally just cast Ave from our hand and win the game without ever opening ourselves up to Infernal Tutor being countered or anything else like that. And that's what makes Ave so dangerous in this deck, is that you can naturally cast her from your hand more reliably because this is a deck that wants a bunch of green sources. And Carpet just really rewards you for that play pattern. And that's what I'm trying to create here, is play patterns that reward you for what your deck naturally wants to do. Because uh, I feel like Ant recently has been trying to be bad the Epic Storm, and you don't want that. So I would actually board into Carpets and Ave and board out Ad Nauseam. Uh, and then, you know, probably some other stuff. We'll get to that when it comes to it. I'm not going to do the whole sideboard plan in the deck tech, but uh, that's what I would be doing. And then we also have Peer Under the Abyss, and I would board that in as well. I don't know if we want to keep uh, Pass and Flames in post board. We probably do, but you could even question boarding it out and just being an Ave Peer deck. Uh, we'll figure that out once it comes to boarding, but I don't hate it. So that's the game plan. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. If you have any questions on this deck tech, feel free to put those down below. But we're almost 17 minutes in already, so I'm going to hop on into match number one. Tyler, I hope you enjoyed this deck tech. I know it was very long, but hopefully you Ant players enjoyed it, even if you disagreed with some things. I'll see you in match number one. Don't go anywhere. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to click that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe. That said, there's no better way of showing your support than becoming a member of this channel. You get sweet perks, and we get to keep making combo content. The perks get better and better each level you go up. They also stack. To start off, with our Storm Fan tier, you unlock our private member section of our Discord, which comes with a highlighted user profile, and then some awesome badges and emotes for YouTube. Looking for a Cyborg help? Become a Stormtrooper, our middle tier, for two Cyborg guides of your deck choice every single month, on top of 50% off donation decks. Did we mention you also get 10% off merchandise from our shop? With our top tier, the Combo Cabal, you get a free donation deck every single month, 15% off merchandise from our shop, early access to private deck lists, and the most valuable perk in my opinion, videos early. That's right, you heard it, early access to all videos. Videos. But maybe Sweet Perk Secret Deck List Early Access to Videos isn't for you, but you'd still like to show your appreciation. Make sure to check out the epicstorm.com slash shop for card singles and storm swag. Please don't forget to use your membership discounts. Finally, if you want to see your combo deck here on this very YouTube channel, make sure to visit theepicstorm.com slash donation decks, where all you have to do is attach your TXT file and pick a donation tier. With our epic tier, you can even join me in a video to showcase your bold brew in person and explain the ins and outs of your strategy. Card availability won't be an issue due to our new sponsor, Card Hoarder. With Card Hoarder, renting is super easy. If you're looking to get into Magic Online, there isn't a better, more affordable solution than Card Hoarder. Fun fact, you can rent the Epic Storm for seven tickets a week, which is just a great deal. There are many ways you can support us. Just pick whatever is best for you. In the meantime, let's play some Magic. Welcome to match number one. We are on the play with Ad Nauseam Tendrils. Well, this hand has all of our payoffs in it, which is a little bit awkward. We're going to have to ship this one. Uh, according to MTG Goldfish, our opponent plays Maverick, by the way, so I don't think that this is actually a keep when we're going to go to five. Um, I guess we'll try this out. I mean, I don't love this, but 
that's what we have, right? So I'm actually going to hold the Delta. So you could thought seize right here, but I'm going to hold the land so that way I can set up basic island, basic swamp. All right, well, this is clearly not Maverick. <laughs> All right, turn one Dalber. You got it. I don't think I would have kept the seven against Dalber. The six was a little sketchy anyway. All right, so we're going to try to put back this Lotus Petal off the Brainstorm. Let's grab that basic island and cast Brainstorm. Well, that was really good. Um, I think we might actually want to keep the other Thoughtseize. Alternatively, I could go Petal Thoughtseize right now, and then I have Mana next turn to Ad Nauseam. I think this is a slightly better line. All right, let's grab that Swamp. Thought sees We can pay for days or the illusion that we're willing to pay for days here. And they're going to force it pitching Murktide. You got it. Four cards in the opponent's hand. Delver Trigger. Reveals days. So now we would need to draw plus mana to win next turn. All right, we're going to 15. Ponder. All right, they're passing, so they have one days up. They chose not to shuffle. I can't win with this veil. Um, we just have to pass. That means that our best draw just became a dark ritual. You could also argue that uh, a Cabal Ritual could do it here. So we're going to take 3 down to 12. And another Delver. Okay, come on, Dak. Please give me a Ritual. Draw. Uh, I guess I should play out the C. Dark Ritual. And we're just going to preemptively play the Veil. Because we know that they have days, but if they force this, we get a little bit of extra info. I guess I didn't need to play the ritual first. That was a small mistake. So we're going to be attempting to win here with uh, no mana floating and three lotus petals in our deck. So I could pay for days here, but then I can't cast Ad Nauseam. So we're just going to jam and hope for the best. Storm 4. They have three unknowns and it resolves. Okay, so we need to flip Lotus Petals. All right, there's a diamond. There's one petal, now Dark Ritual. Come on, Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual wins. Uh, that doesn't do it. All right, it has to be Dark Rit. I guess another petal could do it. And that's game. That's a bummer. We actually flipped the pedal too. Uh, ad nauseum tendrils. Okay, so we this was also on a mulligan to five. Like it's hard to be upset about this, but uh, what you saw there was a little bit of how thoughtsies can also be awkward with uh, ad nauseum in your deck. Uh, not that it made a huge difference, but you know we could add two more life. So here we're gonna bring in the the pier, get rid of this ad nauseum. I do think we want Carpet of Flowers, and I also think we want the Aves. We're like, we're just trying to be an Ave deck now. Uh, so we're at 65. I would definitely get rid of this Reign of Filth. And then we have to find four more slots. I don't know how much we actually want the Fluster uh, in this matchup. It's not really four. Um, like, it's fine. I just don't know if it's what we want to be doing when we're trying to win with uh, Ave Progenitor Ooze. So now we have three more slots to find, and it's actually kind of tough because of how um, our deck is currently constructed. Like, you don't have Puritan, so not every card is good when you sideboard, which is what you want. Like, sometimes people will say, hey, I like Puritan because it makes it really easy for sideboarding. That tells you that that card stinks and it shouldn't be in your deck. So we need to figure out, hey, we're at 63. I think you could probably shave one Cabal Ritual. Uh, that seems fine to me. Um... I think you could probably take out a Lotus Petal because we're boarding in better mana. And now we're at 61. I think I'm actually going to board out of Thoughtseize. I know it's crazy, but 
six per like ant always plays so much protection like this deck list is eight which you know I, I built it it's my own uh doing here but like the epic storm is down to five the epic gamble plays four you play eight because thought sees like isn't very good against a bunch of force effects which is what we're facing and we're looking to beat a bunch of force effects just by playing ave so ave is almost like built-in protection in the same way that galvanic relay is built in protection so i think you're allowed to board out a singleton thought sees there and i know it's like a foreign concept to a lot of ant players and i'm not trying to be mean here but a lot of people will look at the epic storm and go that deck only has five protection spells yeah kind of uh galvanic relay is a protection spell in a way does it force through your combo piece no but what it does is it allows you to blow past protect or past force effects or counter spells i guess is what i'm trying to say here so that's what you're looking to do instead of only having one point of access you have multiple points to win the game all right game two versus rug i'm, I'm sorry is it delver uh this looks fine to me we'll keep this i'm gonna hold back the trap for now no need to expose that to wasteland quite yet all right misty let's go grab our island and ponder triple protection with the thought sees i don't think i actually want this we're gonna shuffle bingo all right delta channeler you got it draw that was good so i think what we want to do is set up thought seas into carpet i'm just going to pass here and by not playing carpet right now we're incentivizing our opponent to play out more islands which is really what we want anyway Scalding Tarn. All right, so they're getting in. We'll fall to 18 life. And the opponent is passing. Draw. Okay. So I'm actually going to go get Bayou here just because I want green sources for this Ave. Thoughtsies. Brainstorm in response. Brainstorm. Thought sees. Five cards in the hand. All right, so we're going to pick up the days here, or pick off the days here, because we don't want them to be able to pick up an island. And then I'm going to switch phases and play the Wish Claw, which might seem a little bit odd, and I get it. Um, but. We don't have enough mana to play Wishclaw into Ave next turn, so I'd rather just have that in play. Now they're taking a redraw off the uh, the Brainstorm. Like, they're drawing a card they knew was there, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Wasteland, to be expected. Okay. And another Channeler. Bobble. So this will get rid of a card that they knew was on top unless they decide to keep it so they're deciding to keep it okay they now have delirium and we're going to 12. all right so they're drawing a card off the i guess i could have brainstormed in response to that um so i'm going to take my draw here with this ability on the stack i'm going to cast brainstorm so if they pyroblast i'll get an extra mana from carpet okay um what does this do so i can't get to triple green the natural way hmm so i don't think i can hard cast ave is the problem well not this turn at least we know our opponent has ponder and two unknowns one of which is likely a force. Um, so Storm is one. I could put back Ave, Valk, and then go Carpet, Dark Ritual, Lion's Eye Diamond, and then Ave off Wish Claw, which is 20 power. Um, but then we're giving them a Claw. 
But I think that's probably our best bet here. And then the channelers have to attack, so they, they won't have any blockers back. All right, we'll play another carpet. Switch phases. All right, we'll add black here. Play dark ritual. Opponent tanking on this ritual. If they force ritual, we cannot ave this turn. I don't. I won't have enough mana. Although if they force ritual, we could start to look at possibly a casting peer into the abyss next turn. And dark ritual has finally resolved. What about this lines at diamond? All right, so we will add triple green, activate wish claw, and we are about to enter slime time. All right, storm five. Really wish we had one more storm, but beggars can't be choosers. Okay. And they all resolved. So maybe they had a fluster? Maybe that's what they kept? As of right now, we have lethal on board. Obviously that could change. We gave our opponent a claw. But they have to attack for six and we go to six. And then we can swing for 20. Ooh, we're dead. Okay. They have lethal. Uh, so they had bolt in hand, which I don't think we were supposed to play around. And now they can attack for six, use wish call for another bolt and end the game. I don't think you're supposed to play around that. They're like, I don't know. Like, I think most Blue Red Dauber players would board out bolt versus ant. Our opponent didn't based on how game one played out, but, uh, we just got punished. It happens. So, also, they kept Bolt off their Surveils, which is pretty interesting. Uh, because if you think about how this game played off, they hid Lightning Bolt off Brainstorm, right? And then they played Bobble and chose to keep Lightning Bolt. So, uh, it worked out for our opponent that we played into their strategy, but that was a weird decision tree that they took. Uh, I still think Slime Time was the correct choice. It didn't work out here, but I do think it was the right move. Uh, so, we're 0-1, and one, 4 rounds left to go. If you haven't joined them already, I would recommend opening up our description down below and joining our seven social media networks. They're each great in their own way, but I would strongly suggest joining our Discord server. In there, you will find others just like you looking to improve their Storm game and grow as a combo community. If you're a member of our YouTube channel, you should sync your account to Discord to unlock our private member section that has the latest and greatest deck lists, concepts, and much, much more. Let's get back to comboing out. Match number two. This time I'm not going to look up what our opponent's playing. And wow, we opened up the nuts. Is this a TES hand? It looks like one. We're definitely going to keep this. All right. Um, I should actually play Lotus Petal first. It allows me to have Veil of Summer up. Lines of Diamond. Lions of Diamond, Dark Ritual, Wishclaw Talisman. All right, so that resolved. All right, now that we've opened up the nuts, I'm going to type in our opponent's name. Let's see what they have. Jonas Encio. Legacy Sneak and Show. Okay. So let's attempt a Veil of Summer here. That resolved. All right, so we have two options. We can either Slime Time or we can add Nauseam with zero, I'm sorry, with one mana floating. Uh, slime Time would be for seven ooze, and I think seven's likely to get the job done here, so we're just gonna Slime Time. Like, there's very few draws that beat this out of most Legacy decks. All right. The slime has timed. And the opponent has conceded. Wooch woot, that's how we do. Hell yeah. Alright, so do I switch anything? Our opponent's last deck was sneak and show, but they only have one result. 
Uh, part of me thinks we're just supposed to resubmit here, and I think that's what I'll do. It's worth noting that if Ave was in fact empty there, Gristlebrand could in theory win that game because it's just a huge batter skull. Uh, but also, it wasn't lethal. Our opponent would get multiple turns where there Ave was just a guaranteed one turn attack into a win. Game number two. So here we've opened up a hand with a protection spell, a lot of mana, even a payoff, but we need an, an additional proactive spell. I think I'm actually going to keep this. A lot of ant players would probably mulligan because it doesn't have a cantrip, it doesn't have a tutor. That's sort of a bad mindset to have when you have more action spells in your deck. And they're obviously not on uh, Sneak and Show, but... I don't like that mindset because we're now a deck that has eight tutors that win the game. It looks like our opponent's on some sort of depth strategy here. Uh, but we have four Witchclaw, four Infernal Tutor that just immediately win. So why would you ship this? Uh, you're at least in the Epic Storm, you're like 34% to hit every turn. I have to imagine Ant has similar percentages with the current configuration that we're playing right now. It's a very similar number of payoffs. Heritage Shirt, so they're elves. Okay. Elves that has Thoughtseize turn one. Explains why they couldn't handle the slime. If I were them, I'd probably just take the Thoughtseize here, but let's see what they do. If they take Lion's Eye Diamond, I think it's a sign that they might have Surgical. An additional benefit to not mulliganing to Infernal Tutor or Wishclaw Talisman is, well... We're lucky that, you know, our opponent, like, played turn one Thoughtseize or whatever, but we didn't mulligan to a payoff only to have it discarded versus a deck in the format that just happens to play Thoughtseize. Um, I'm going to Thoughtseize. So if I Thoughtseize and they Surgical, I'm going to feel like a dummy, but they could have done that already. This is a throwback. Regal Force. I haven't seen that card in years. Uh, let's take this Heritage Druid. Pass the turn. One swept teeth. Regal Force used to be like the norm back in the day. So our opponent's like playing a super combo based list. Like Regal Force was like one of the targets before Crater Huff, and even then people didn't want to play it. All right, I'm gonna have thoughts he's again. Oh, Sora Shepherd. Let's take that. They can keep their glimpse of nature. When Swept Heath likely getting Dryad Arbor, and it does. Green mana. All right, they're getting in. Chose not to play Forest. Interesting. I guess we'll play Misty. Uh, we could really use a payoff. We've gone three turns so far. Odds would say that we probably should have drawn uh, a tutor or a cantrip by now. Now they play the forest. Four cards in hand. Three mana for a green sun. Might be a collector roof coming. Green sun it is. Wirewood symbiote. That's an interesting choice. Okay. Draw. Ponder! Let's cast it. I think we want to keep this other Ponder. We'll fetch. Let's grab Underground Sea and cast this Ponder. It's card number six to the graveyard. Ooh, Ave. So we've already played a land. Um, hmm. I could slime time this turn, I think. I could go... No, that doesn't work. Am I crazy for wanting to keep this? I might be. I think I'm actually just going to shuffle. Yeah, let's shuffle. Okay, so I think we win now. Um, let's just talk through this. So I would play Lion's Eye Diamond... And then I could Cabal Ritual. 
So I, what I'm wondering here, is it better to go Lion's Eye Diamond Cabal Ritual in response Infernal Tutor for another Cabal Ritual? Or is it better to just flashback past in Flames? And I think it's just better to get another Cabal Ritual. So let's do the math. So I would play Cabal Ritual, which would only make three mana. Lion's Eye Diamond would bring us up to four. Uh, that's after Infernal Tutor. So then another Cabal Ritual would bring us up to seven. Past in Flames flashes back for five, so we'd have two floating. Cabal Ritual, Cabal Ritual, Tutor. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Tendrils would be eight. Other than the flashbacks. All right, so I think we have this, as long as my math is correct. Because I forgot about the flashbacks on the ritual, so this should just be lethal. Uh, how we would lose this if our opponent happened to have drawn Endurance over the last turn or so. Alright, Lion's Eye Diamond. Hold priority, and we're going to sacrifice this for red. Storm is five. Now we get another copy of Cabal Ritual. Cast the Cabal Ritual. I mean, I'm going for it, so if you have your card, just play it. Our opponent takes very long pauses on everything, and I feel like that's like not the best way to bluff, but maybe they actually have something, who knows? They might just also not know the matchup that well, that's also possible. All right, so Cabal Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Tutor. Now we get Tendrils of Agony. Thoughtseize. I'm glad they paused for all that. Uh, let's Thoughtseize again, because I can. And the opponent has conceded the game. So we did the classic Piff Loop. Woot woot. And we are now one and one. Playing your favorite combo deck and paper just got so much easier with the Epic Storm mini token pack. You can pick one up at theepicstorm.com slash shop for $13. It includes 64 double-sided mini tokens. That's 128 tokens total. And they include 10 black, 10 blue, 10 red, 5 green, 5 white, 3 colorless, 20 storm counters. That means that you can count your way all the way up to 20 for grape shot. Everyone's favorite storm wind condition. A galvanic relay exile indicator, four treasure tokens for strike it rich, and then 10 monk tokens for our vintage friends. It also has slime time live. Eve Progenitor Ooze Tokens with the power toughness already built in to make playing in paper so much easier. No fumbling around with dice. We've got you covered. Make sure to go grab those if you're playing modern. And then Squirrels vs. Goblins, Chatterstorm vs. Empty the Warrens, the Battle of the Ages. You definitely need 20 Squirrel Tokens and 20 Goblin Tokens. You're going to love this mini token pack, I promise. And once again, you can grab that at theepicstorm.com slash shop. Match three on the play with Ad Nauseam Tendrils. Good hand. Keep. Opponent taking a mulligan to five, only to get hit by turn one Thoughtseize. All right, Underground C and Thoughtseize. What are you playing, opponent? Oops, all spells. Okay, um... It's interesting. So if they draw any mana, oh no, they already have uh, the combo. So we have to leave them with Thoughtseize unless we want to just be dead here. All right. And actually, I think I'm going to hold back the Lion's Eye Diamond because like making them choose between Tutor or LED, they're probably going to pick the Tutor anyway. And then that way I can have additional Storm Count. Because they're putting themselves to 15 here. So the required storm is lower. Infernal Tutor down. Draw. All right. I think I'm, I don't know. I guess that was a mistake. I was thinking if I brainstorm into Thought Seas, but maybe I should have just played the brainstorm off the underground seed. Now I feel a little bit like a dummy. Yeah, and now I can't fetch. 
I'm just getting max punished here for that decision. All right, so I'm going to hide the brainstorm and then pass the turn. That just went all sorts of poorly. I shouldn't have done that. That was really bad. I have to pray that our opponent didn't draw it. They're counting, so I'm probably just dead here. All right, they're passing. So now we have a decision on whether or not I brainstorm and then fetch, or I fetch and then brainstorm. So if I fetch and then brainstorm, I could brainstorm lock myself, or if I fetch now, I don't brainstorm lock myself, but I see the island that I know that I don't want. I'm going to try to not lock myself here. All right. Do another brainstorm. I'm gonna just grab the bayou and uh, I guess there's very few cards that allow me to win here, but let's try it. We're gonna hide the ponder. Uh, and I think I'm actually gonna get rid of the Veil of Summer next turn. Let's thought seize. Get rid of the Dark Ritual. Pass the turn. Chrome Mox. Are they imprinting Memories Journey? And they do. Okay, draw. Let's try to shuffle away that Veil of Summer or win the game. We're going to shuffle. All right, we need to pay off. I guess I could have kept the Veil of Summer to protect Flusterstorm. Hmm, that would have been an interesting decision. Um, because if we think about how this game goes, they're likely to play a bunch of like... Uh, okay. Uh, I can fluster this. But uh, how they win is by like playing a bunch of Cabal Therapies and stuff and then Dread Return. So I could have, I mean, the game played out strangely, but I could protect the, the Fluster and then counter the Dread Return. That's not what happened here, but it was an option. Pushclaw? Damn. All right. So the opponent's multiple draws away from winning at this point. So this being the first draw all right we're almost 33 percent of the way through our deck we have eight tutors seven because we have infernal tutor in the graveyard oh they hit it they hit dark ritual creature those were their best two yep wow i can't believe we never found uh another tutor effect when we have eight in our deck this feels like a game we probably should have won and just didn't. Yeah, they got us. All right, so we'll go to game two. So we want surgicals for sure. Um, probably want the other fluster. We can get rid of Eve. We don't need that. The question is if we want dress down or not. Probably. So the problem is that we're at 63 now, and anything we bring in is diluting our deck a little bit. Um, so I think you can definitely board out basics in this matchup and just be like, because you don't want consistent land drops like at all. So we can go down to 13 lands, which might be a little bit sketchy, and then like board out the Reign of Filth. Or we can keep one land and get rid of this dress down. I feel like Dress Down might be a trap in this matchup. Let's try this out. Game 2 versus Oops All Spells. Can't keep that. Ay, ay, ay. Going to 5. So this is a turn 1, I believe. Um, bottom Thought sees LED. Yeah. Alright. Reordain never did this, that's for sure. Dark Ritual. Lion's Eye Diamond. Lion's Eye Diamond. Wishclaw Talisman. Okay, Storm is five. We're going to have to add Nauseam here. 
I'm just sort of hoping that we don't show our opponent the fact that um, we have surgical in our deck. Let's cast ad nauseum. Pony block. Okay. Ball ritual. Oh, they've seen surgical. Oh, I could have stopped. I just realized I, I didn't have a land drop yet. Um, now I have to keep flipping. That does it. Damn. I think I might have been able to stop at the Cabal Rit. So that would have been from 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, I could have stopped at the Cabal Ritual. That's my mistake. And not shown them the surgical. Damn. I'm a little uh, bummed about that. Okay. Damn it. Now they know about surgical extraction. All right, we're just going to resubmit. That's my bad. I punted that. This hand is very good. We will keep this. Keep. Turn one Crypt of Agadim. Thought Seize. So if we draw Dark Ritual, we have Turn 1 Ad Nauseum, but it's sort of a tall ask. And they got rid of our Thought Seize, which is interesting. Okay. Come on, Dark Ritual. I think... Oh, wow, we hit it. Um, I don't know if I love the idea of taking the Thought Seize anyway, because it allows us to ponder... And ideally with cards like that, you want to take Ponder, or you want to lead, take Surgical because it forces me to choose between Ponder or Thoughtseize. But here we just drew our best card anyway, and we're going to uh, put Ad Nauseum on the stack. We have three Lotus Petals as hits. Well, speaking of the devil. Okay, so we're at nine already. I, uh, and that might do it. The opponent concedes! Wooch, wooch! Look at us. 2 1 over Oops All Spells. Hey, you're still watching. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, and subscribe. If you're looking to make a purchase from Card Hoarder, TCG Player, or Amazon, and are looking to support us, you can open up our description down below, and in there you will find our affiliate links. Those same links are found on the homepage of the Epic Storm. But that's not all. We've included a card hoarder button on our website that will load the Epic Storm in your card hoarder cart to make life simple for you. All right, it's time for match number four. We're on the draw. I have no clue what our opponent's playing, but I am going to keep this hand. What are you on, Madvik? Madvac? Prismatic Vista, so likely a control deck. And ponder. All right, our turn draw. We're in a filth. That's actually a pretty good one. This volcanic island is so awkward here. Um, because, like, the Misty can get by you, but once again, this is what I exactly what I talked about on the deck tech where this volcanic it casts brainstorm, but it doesn't cast veil or cabal ritual. And if I get by you with this Misty, we have all four colors. But it comes at the caveat of not doing what I actually need it to do. I need green and black, not green or black. So here we're seeing, ooh, they missed land two. Okay, I'm going to take a, I was thinking about brainstorming on the end step there, but now that they've missed, I just want to try to capitalize here. So let's cast this brainstorm. There we go. Let's get rid of the wish claw and veil of summer. Which might seem a little bit weird, but we're not going to have green green next turn. So, get by you and cast this Thought Seize. Oh, they're blue white Omni. Let's get rid of the arms chant. Pass the turn. Brainstorm. All right, so they found the land. Draw. 
Lion's Eye Diamond. Rain of Filth. Okay. Um, I'm going to sacrifice the Underground Sea. I'm going to sacrifice this Volk. I'm still one short. All right, I'm going to get blown out here and just accept losing to Arms Chant. Lions of Diamond. And Ad Nauseam. And it just resolves. Wow. Okay. And we will stop at five because we do have a green slime in our deck. All right, let's play Wishclaw. And by having Wishclaw on the battlefield, if for some reason, let's say our opponent's a crazy person and they're playing Bant and they have a, a Veil of Summer, we could go get the uh, Fluster Storm in response to the Veil of Encounter it. Let's see what they drew. Okay, so that's game number one over Blue White Omni. I think we want the Fluster, and let's bring in Surgicals. Get rid of this Ave. All right, we're at 62. I think this is a matchup that we can afford to board out a basic. And now we're at 61. Maybe shave the Reign of Filth versus the deck with Orms Chant in it. Let's try this out. Game number two on the draw versus Blue Light Omni. Here we have Veil of Summer Surgical. Will that be enough? Usually you want to pair Surgical with Discard. So, I mean... At least in this matchup, I don't think that this hand is bad. It's just that's the classic play pattern, but I think discard's never been worse, so I don't know if I love that anyway. All right, turn one ponder from the opponent. Does not shuffle. Draw. Good one. Okay. So let's thought seize. And then we can immediately surgical to um, shuffle their deck. I don't even know if I care about the force. Should I just take Om Omni? Because then, like, how like they'd have to put in like I'm recalled the natural way. Hmm. I think I could also just take the ponder and leave them with impulse omniscience. I think I'd rather do that. All right, let's see. They, they have Lavinia in their deck. Okay, I didn't board for that, but I think I knew that sometimes this deck list plays that, or this deck plays that. So uh, if there is a game three, I will board for that. Let's take a screenshot here. They have one Lavinia that they're drawing to. Two Fluster, four Chant. All right, we will pass the turn. So if I draw a Dark Ritual next turn, we have Ad Nauseam backed by Veil, but um, a land won't do it. And they drew the one of Lavinia! Okay, so that's actually really bad news for us. Uh, wow, a singleton Lavinia off the top. That's bad, but we do have Veil of Summer, which can get rid of the counterpart, but now we have to build up to a bunch of lands. So and we drew the dark ritual, obviously. Oh wow. Okay. Um This is really tough. If I can get up to four lands, we have a Piff win. Wow. That's kind of wild that they drew the one of. We go to 14. And meanwhile, they're buying time to find Orm's Chant. I think this Lavinia is actually going to get me. Draw. There's land number three. Impulse. In fact, I'd argue the Lavinia was their best draw on their deck. Because I think I beat almost every other draw that turn. So here's their deck list. I guess Orm's Chant. Okay, so they had five draws. That would have been insane. Um, 
Okay. And now we have to figure out how to beat Orange Chant and Lavinia, which I don't think I can do. I guess if I drew like discard spell into uh, winning the game and land four, they have four cards in hand. Ponder. I think we need to shuffle this. Like brainstorm is fine, but like it doesn't actually do anything we need here. I just have to pass. And another impulse. So you'd have to imagine by now they found a single copy of Orm's Chant. All right, the opponent now has five cards. Four cards, three lands. I don't know. I need like a Miracle Brainstorm to win this, I think. Draw. Speaking of the devil. They're at 19, so I don't think I'm allowed to keep the the tendrils. I could put back the Lion's Eye Diamond and don't care about the counter aspect of Lavinia. Maybe that's the move. All right. Also, we have a couple of Fluster Storms to potentially stop uh, Orm's Chant. Ponder. That was really good. Uh, still no land four, though. But we, I mean, if need be, we could always use Wishclaw to get land four. Interesting. I think we just take the Omniscience. Pass the turn. Now I feel guilty that I can't remember what the third card down on the Ponder is. I think it's another blue card. So we're drawing Fluster here. It might be a Ritual, maybe. Preordain from the opponent. And another Preordain. So I could cycle Veil right here. I don't think that's what I want to do, though. Draw. So we're drawing Fluster. I know about that. And I think I'm going to take this as an opportunity this turn to play Claw. Ooh, I should have... That was dumb. I should have... Uh, Held up the blue. I don't know why I did that. I'm like, in my brain, I'm so defaulted to leaving up um, Veil of Summer, but that's just, like, not what I needed to do here. Okay. They kept one card off their preordains. So I'm a little bit worried about Orm's Chant, but I don't know. All right. I think there's a Ritual on top. I don't know if that's actually what I want here. I guess it would allow me to pass in Flames win. There's another Claw. Okay. Dark Ritual. Um, I think I'm actually... I want to... Infernal Tutor for another Cabal here. Or is that wrong? I don't know. Who knows what's going on anymore? Reveal Cabal Ritual. Let's cast it. One of these Wish Claws has to get a land. It's worth noting. We cannot win without putting a land on the table. Let's uh, play Cabal Ritual. Okay. So now we can play Wish Claw. I have a feeling that they have the orange chant. Our opponent has cast Force of Will of Pitching Show and Tell. We will attempt to Veil of Summer. Land number four off this would be amazing. And there is Orm's chant. We are going to fluster this. They have two cards. We know one of which is show and tell. So we'll do one, two, three at the uh, the chant, and then we'll target the rest on the uh, the force. And then that one can go back to arms chant. Okay. So we draw off Veil of Summer. If it's a land, this is easy peasy. We drew the piff, even easier. All right, so 
But we'll we'll go get Volcanic Island now. We could just go get tendrils here, but uh, I don't know. There's there's not like a real difference. Infernal Tutor. And our opponent has conceded the game, so we beat Orm's Chant, Lavinia Force. That was a that was a wild one for sure, and we are now three and one with one round left to go. If you're looking for more great Magic the Gathering content, definitely check out the Eternal Glory podcast. It is myself, Brian Cook, alongside Brian Koval and Phil Gallagher. We primarily discuss Legacy. That said, a lot of what we talk about transcends all formats. We're available on all major podcast platforms. The fifth and final round with Ad Nauseum Tendrils. Here we've opened up a reasonable hand. I don't really know what our opponent's playing, but I'm not going to ship this. Moon Stompy. Or uh, it's uh, the Epic Gamble. It's the Epic Gamble. I have, they're pretty favored in this matchup, if I'm being honest. Um, they're just a lot faster than Ant is. Okay. Killing me with Rite of Flames is unjust. I don't like it. Empty. Okay. So they have two cards left. We're off the ad nauseum plan now. Let's ponder. Uh, this is not lethal. This is a three turn thing. So I think I might want to keep this Cabal Ritual. Or I can shuffle. I think I'm actually going to shuffle. I don't think a single Cabal. That was way better. Way better already. So actually I can ad nauseum next turn from 12. With three black floating. And you might be wondering, like, Bryant, should you have played out LED there? Maybe? But I think if our opponent had LED Echo, they would have done it. Uh, they would need a really good draw here to change that, so I'd rather add the Storm Count next turn so that maybe I don't have to cast Ad Nauseum. I'm at 12. Because right now, I have Dark Ritual... Cabal Ritual, LED, Wishclaw, and a Brainstorm, which already puts me at 5 Storm, and I need 8. So there's a chance this Ad Nauseum goes back on that Brainstorm anyway. So they have 2 cards in their passing. Draw. Alright, we should just have Natural Storm here. I don't think I'm going to need the Ad Nauseum. Ding Dong. Alright, Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Lotus Petal. Lions of Diamond. We'll play Wishclaw. Play Wishclaw. And now here we will sacrifice this to cast this, but in response we will sacrifice this diamond. Uh, Cabal Ritual is still on the stack. Let's activate. I mean, this is unnecessary, but I want to do it, so uh, you can't stop me. We'll grab Dark Ritual, which is going to make this Cabal Ritual a threshold. And now we go get that Chicken Tenders! How dare you try to use Rite of Flame against me? How dare you? Alright, so we got game number one over the Epic Gamble. I don't think Veil of Summer is really where we want to be in this matchup, so I'm going to take those out. I like Fluster, and I like Surgicals. I don't love Ave here, so that can get out of here. So I think it's like Chain of Vapor, or we keep one Veil for their, like, one of Tendrils. Um, it's really not that great of a line. Um, or we could board in Peer in our Ad Nauseum deck, which I don't like. I think I'm actually just going to board in a Chain of Vapor. Maybe we could use Chain of Vapor to, like, do some Storm Tricks or something. I feel like that's better than A Veil of Summer, at least in my opinion. hey -oh, This is a hand. I mean, it's probably going to get shuffled back off LED Echo, but this hand's decent. Really good at opening up the Singleton Ad Nauseum, that's for sure. They've kept seven. We will keep as well. Ancient Tomb... 
Bobble. Lotus Petal. Three cards remaining in the opponent's hand. Tapping Ancient Tomb. What is going on here? Empty. Okay. They must be on a, a weird build. Because I, I don't normally see this. Like, this is definitely... I mean, maybe Tony changed his deck. I don't know. But uh, normally you don't see this. Draw. So the question is, do I pedal Brainstorm right now trying to spike into Ad Nauseam? I think the answer might be yes here. Okay. Brainstorm. Found one other Cabal Ritual, but that's not going to do it. Get rid of a Delta, I suppose, and we'll play out this. Storm count doesn't matter this time, so I'm going to play out the Diamond. And we just pass. I don't even have Ad Nauseam next turn. That Brainstorm is so bad. So I'd have to draw like a Lotus Petal or a Dark Ritual on this upcoming turn to have Ad Nauseam. Okay, so we go to 12, fetch. Let's get underground seat, draw. I can't afford to cast this. We just have to uh, pass the turn here. Because like in theory, an Ad Nauseam from three could win, where if I thought sees them, that's off the table. All right, empty might get the job done here. We're going to three life. Come on, uh, give me Brainstorm or Infernal Tutor or something. Opal. They're passing draw. All right, so we have to flip a Tutor effect to win. Even if this Ad Nauseam just flips... Oh, no. Ah, uh, crap. I guess it didn't matter. Uh, Five. Yeah, I don't have the mana to do the play that I thought I wanted to do. So I guess a tutor doesn't do it. And uh, do I keep the LED then? I think I'm supposed to keep the LED. We're at two. The brainstorm? Brainstorm? Shocks. Okay. Game three coming up. I'm just going to hit submit. Game three on the play. Um, I don't know how I feel about this. Let's try it. Ah, uh, double surgical's weird. Okay, opponent kept six cards. We're just gonna ponder. Get that underground C and cast it. Unfortunately, we can't keep that. Okay, pass the turn. The one nice thing about Surgical in this hand is it does help fuel Cabal Ritual into being Threshold. All right, so they've played the Shatter Skull tapped and passing. Wow. Not what I was expecting here. Come on, Brainstorm. Well, that's not what I meant, but let's see what it can do. Ah, okay, so what can I do here? I think I, hmm, there's no like brainstorm tricks we can do next turn. So that's off the table. I just have to play LED and pass. I guess I could, ooh, I could surgical myself and shuffle. Um, and if that was the case, I would have wanted to keep the Infernal Tutor. Lotus Petal. City of Traitors. Burning Wish. You got it. Gamble. I'll allow it. So they discarded LED. So now we can Surgical LED. They likely have an Echo in hand if they Burning Wish for Gamble. 
Yeah, it looks like they're passing. So I'm going to surgical my own ponder. Let's remove these from the deck. I just want to draw a land. Oh no, I wanted to keep that one. That was that was a mistake. Undo. Can I control Z that? I can, okay. Perfect. I, I need that for threshold. <laughs> All right. Draw Rain of Filth. So if the brainstorm hits a land, the rain can actually get the job done here. All right, I think we've got it. Um, let's put pedal back. Play the delta. Yeah, this would have been better if I had Infernal Tutor in hand, but I I I did mess that up a little bit. Goodbye, you. Brain of Filth. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Cabal Ritual. Wish Claustrum 5. And I'm going to sacrifice both of these and cast Ad Nauseam. There's some argument to be made that you could keep one of them back. Uh, so that way your Infernal Tutors are more likely to win. Honestly, I feel like that's sort of baloney because, like, that means that you would have flipped a bunch of mana off that ad nauseum, which is less likely to happen. So, I think that this is probably just better. Okay. <laughs> uh, we're at six, four. All right. So, we still need uh, to do something meaningful here. I've already played my land. So I'm dead if I flip past in flames. I can rotate for dark ritual, but then I'm one short. Um, I've already played my land. There's one card that kills me off the flip. Um, so I could also surgical and then tendrils, but I don't think that's actually a good line. I'm going to flip. That should do it. All right, so now I play Wish Claw. And now I can go get Cabal Ritual. Or Dark Ritual, it doesn't matter. Um, let's grab Cabal, though, because I can. Cabal Ritual. Surgical, this Lion's Eye Diamond. Ooh. They have a blood moon. Okay, I see you. And then tendrils of agony. So we finished this four and one losing to Delver. But honestly, that Delver match, I mulled to five in game one with like a garbage hand. And then in game two, we lost because we assumed that our opponent, and I mean, possibly my own fault, but we assumed that our opponent wouldn't have Lightning Bolt in versus Ant, which I think is a reasonable assumption to be made. So, um, that and then the fact that they kept it off a channeler on a combo turn, which is really strange. Like, we got punished. Our opponent won. Tip of the cap to them. I'm not angry. It's just like, I don't think that's a fair line that I'm supposed to play around. So, we lost that. So, Mulligan to five and an odd line. I think that this list was pretty good. Let me know what you think. Uh, I apologize to those of you that don't like long deck text, but I felt like this video needed one. I would like to thank Tyler Carden for the donation deck. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, that's what I've got. So thank you for watching. Take care and keep storming. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com slash tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.